want to do a short video on you know triggers and the process of that I know I did a video previously on triggers but I believe that this update is needed so the situation that occurred is that I found myself in a cycle that I knew God had healed me of okay so what I want to talk about today is when a cycle in your life has been broken there are different ways that we will encounter different things that will trigger us to respond and to act and to create a new cycle okay now I'm gonna be a little bit evasive in this video not because I don't um, like to be authentic and not because um, I don't mind sharing but I'm gonna be evasive for the mere fact that there are certain things that I know it's not time to release yet okay so the situation that I was encountering had to do with abuse in my past and this abuse occurred probably around the age of 16 years old okay and so I've gone through counseling I've been through therapy and I've even been through deliverance so what happened was a situation occurred to want to set off some things in I guess a way to put me back in those cycles so the situation that happened was out of my control okay I got my hair cut as you can see my, my hair is gone and before I got my hair cut I, I knew exactly what I wanted I wanted something that was gonna be low maintenance and I wanted something that I would be able to maintain at home myself so when I went in I got my hair cut it didn't come out the way that I wanted so I said to my hairstylist, I was like, this is not what I asked you to do. And why, I, I asked her specifically, why did you make one side longer than the other? That's not what we talked about. That's not the picture, you know, I showed you. And she said to me, I, I don't know. And so I'm sitting in a chair and my chest is welling up and I'm feeling what I felt when the abuse happen I'm feeling like I'm not in control I'm feeling like my power had been taken away and I remember sitting in a chair saying you're okay you're okay Judith you are okay all right so that's what's one of the principles that we learn you know in therapy that you know what how you think is gonna affect how you feel and how you feel is gonna affect the way you behave right so what I was attempting to do was create new thoughts by thinking them can I tell you that that didn't work okay so what ended up happening is um, I swiped my card got in my car as soon as I got in my car I was bawling like bawling as if I had just been offended all over again that I was in that place of, of, of control uh, being taken away from me, not, not feeling like I could have helped the situation that happened. So this is the reason why I wanted to do this video today because there are some vital things that number one, I learned in this, number two, that God wanted to show me in this, and number three, that, that the Holy Spirit helped to heal me in this process. Okay, so number one, the first thing that God allowed me to realize is that what you are afraid of, you are doomed to repeat. What am I saying? Um, unconsciously or subconsciously, I was harboring uh, this idea that I cannot put myself in a situation ever again where I can be taken advantage of. Um, the abuse that happened before, I was in a situation that I should not have been in, and so the abuse occurred. And so in my heart and in my mind, tucked away, there was a defense mechanism or a wall or a safeguard that made me super cautious. Um, super cautious with my children, where they go, where they spend the night, and they're not even really children anymore <laughs> I have like grown men uh, my daughter is the youngest and she's in high school now or going to high school right this is the summer so 
I had these uh, these barriers and self safeguards up that I did not know existed. So number one, God wanted that which was in my subconscious to be pushed to my conscious mind. Okay, and when the Bible declares that all things work together for the good to them who are called according to the purpose of the Lord and who love him, right? This was one of those situations where it didn't feel good initially because a whole plethora of emotions came flooding back. And to be absolutely honest and to be absolutely authentic, I went through a, a week of hell. You know, when you pledge, you go through hell week. Listen to me. I went through a week of hell where um, I was even having encounters in my dreams, but God is so faithful. So number one, what he wanted to do was show me, uh, Judith, we need to get rid of these safeguards because I told you to guard your heart. I did not tell you to live in fear. I didn't tell you to guard your heart by having these unconscious and subconscious uh, safeguards and barriers up so that you can protect yourself. I also told you that I am protecting you, that I am your keeper. I am your guardian. I am your safe haven. So this is a new level for me. Okay. Now listen to me. I want to give this disclaimer and say that at the end of the day, I am not saying that you know uh, God is such a uh, tyrant that he needs to use situations like mine to get a point across that is not what I'm saying what I'm saying is that all of us are in our process all of us are going through different things and all of us will experience them differently, okay? And our reactions to those resp responses are going to be different as well. What I'm saying uh, is that he needed to to get me to a place because I'm, I'm transitioning. Um, he needed to get me to a place where I am totally dependent on him, not safeguarding myself and not safeguarding uh, um, these ideas and, and, and these things that are going to keep me in a little bubble, keep me constrained, keep me confined, and definitely keep fear alive, okay? The second point that um, was revealed to me in this process is that we cannot negate the fact that we are going to consistently resist the devil okay so it was almost like he needed to bring back to my remembrance that judith you are healed you are absolutely healed you have no more fragmentation you are not split you are not you know a, a victim you are not going to play the victim card you are going to continue to resist the devil and he is going to continue to flee so that is another principle just because you went through a hard situation any type of abuse, it could have been sexual abuse, emotional abuse, domestic abuse, okay, mental abuse, whatever that abuse may have been, whatever those hard um, situations may have been, once you get to a place of freedom, the enemy is not going to just be like, oh, okay, she's free, you know, she's good, I'm not going to bother her anymore. The Bible expressly declares in Matthew that when a demon or a stronghold or a spirit leaves a body, a vessel, it goes into dry places, it doesn't find rest. Why doesn't it find rest? It doesn't find rest because it doesn't have a vessel to act out what it wants to do so it comes back it returns to the old place that it lived that it functioned through that it was able to ex express how um uh, 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 um its characteristic is right that's why we name certain spirits what we name them not because they have a name but because they're expressing a certain way through people and so we name them to identify them right so that spirit comes back finds that the vessel is clean and swept the upkeep is great but it's not filled right so that 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 spirit goes and gets other spirits the bible says more powerful than itself to come back and live in that vessel again and so what he wanted me to understand is that do not let that thought come in to make you believe that you are not healed you are healed for whom the sun sets free is free indeed but when we believe the lie because triggers come and because situations come to bring us back to an old place an old uh, 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 um an old trauma 
We need to resist that devil, resist that spirit, resist those thoughts, resist those emotions, resist those feelings. As you resist those things, the enemy does not have an open door to come back and re-inhabit your vessel, okay? And finally, the last thing that I learned in this process and that God wanted me to understand by Holy Spirit is that you guard yourself by giving away your control to the Most High God. What do I mean by that? Isaiah 26 was my comfort through hell week. And I'm not going to go into the specifics of everything I went through every day of last week since the haircut. But... Isaiah 26 says that we should confide in our Father. And when we confide in Him, He makes us mentally strong. And so there is a giving away of our power, um, the power to hold on to pa the past, the power to hold on to those hurtful emotions, the power to want to respond and react and, and, and to want to uh, um, give the person the business, <laughs> as I would want to say. You you know, you, you, re you can read them like, let me read you because you just, you know. But what he wanted me to understand is that when you come to me, Judith, when you confide in me, I'm going to make you mentally strong. I'm going to make you stable. And so the other thing is you're not going to stop going through. That's not what this life is about. You're going to continue to go through. You're going to continue to have hardship. But what I want you to understand is I am your confidant. You know, I am the one that when you come to me, I am faithful to give you peace. I am faithful to, to get, get your mind stable, to get your emotions stable. But when you don't come and confide in me, when you don't come and let me know what's going on with you, then you begin to set up in a place of pride. Why pride? Because pride say, I got this. I'm good. I'm not getting ready to explode. I'm not getting ready to suffocate. And everything we say, we're not getting ready to go because we haven't taken it to our father, the one who loves us, the one who is all powerful. We end up imploding. And that imploding can be everything from this depression to not being self-motivated anymore, to not thinking you're good enough. Should I still do the business? Should I still counsel others? Should I still mentor? Am I still qualified to do the work of the Lord and to cast out demons? What do I look like trying to tell somebody else what they need and how they can go forward? And no, the devil is a liar. Isaiah 26, I think it's verse 3, was my safeguard. Come on, confide in the Lord thy God. Confide in him. He's the only one that when you confide in him, he's going to give you an answer. You can confide in your sisters, your brothers, your friends, you know, pastors and whatever. And they may give you a set of instructions we may, which may be profitable. But there is something about when we confide to our father, we ain't leaving nothing out. Come on. You know, sometimes you can tell folks your business, but you ain't telling them everything because you don't want to be judged or you don't want to whatever. Just like I was evasive when I was telling y'all my story like it's everything is not to be revealed yet and then sometimes you can give information away and people don't know how to receive you afterwards but when you confide in the most high the creator of your soul the creator of all things in heaven and earth he is the manufacturer of the heart the mind and the soul come on now when you go and you take it to him and you confide in him and you get it out of you and you empty out then he can say whoa that's all I was waiting for. Now, let me show you what I'm doing. Let me show you that I am in the midst of this. Let me show you that you are never alone. I will never leave you or forsake you, even in those hard times when you feel like you're going to lose it. I'm with you. So I pray that this video has encouraged you today, love bugs. Thank you so much for tuning in into my channel. Until next time, bye.